Hello everyone, welcome to the Red State. The start off with the sorry, the start off with the interesting fact of the day. Um, the Detroit Pistons have only um, selected number one once back in 1970, so they don't select it often. But now um, they will get the chance to do so. Um, I didn't get a chance to go um, the NBA draft lottery results, you know, the other night. Because um, I had other things I want to talk about, but now I will go over them now. Um, so, as we know, the um, the lottery now has been set. You got Detroit with the first overall pick, and then Houston second. Cleveland jumped to third. Cleveland was supposed to be, you know, around that um, six range or so, but they were able to jump three. Toronto was in fourth, and they were kind of like, you know, in that um, nine, nine range or so. So that was a big jump for them. And then five is Orlando. Uh, which sucks if you're Atlanta because you know you you tied you know thir- you know you triple tied you know for the best odds with the first pick and they had to sell for fifth. Um, Oklahoma City is six. Um, Golden State in seventh because they get a p- the pick from Minnesota because of that Wiggins deal. Um, and then Orlando is picking eighth again because they you know they traded uh, got a first round for that Vucevic trade during the trading deadline. And then Sacramento 9, New Orleans 10, Charlotte 11, San Antonio 12, 13 in the F14 Golden State, so no surprises there. Um, so now, it was very hard for me um, to figure out um, who goes where, who belongs where. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go over my predictions. And this will be just for the lottery. Um, this won't be for the whole first round, just because with NBA drafts specifically, it's just kind of really hard to predict these things. Like, there's some... Players that are, should be taken the first round, but don't go to the second round, vice versa. Like, it's just kind of all up in the air. Um, but before I go over my predictions, let me tell you, this is a very deep draft class. It's specifically a very deep guard class. Like, a lot of guards here. Um, which sucks if you're some teams that are in the lottery who don't necessarily need more guards. They can use some big man, but oh well. Um, so let's get started. So for the number one overall pick, that's going to go to point guard... Kate Cunningham from Oklahoma State. Um, apparently, Cunningham's only going to meet with one team during the draft process, and that's whoever had the number one pick, which ends up being the Detroit Pistons here. So, unless the Detroit Pistons are just like, yeah, we don't feel like it, then I, we have to all assume that he's going to go there. Um, a, a six, a point guard um, is a pretty nice luxury to have, um, and he's going to fit fit in right. Um, he's going to be able to fit in right in with six. Quidus Bay and Jeremy Grant and Isaiah Stern, all these young studs, you know. Now, um, Cunningham, he was a, he's a good shooter. Like, he's a very good shooter, but he's also very consistent. That's what um, had him out of the postseason early um, was inconsistent shooting. So I need to see him improve on that. And if he does, then he can be like Anthony um, Edwards was last year in his rookie season. He can be like, you know, that type of player where he's going to um, get a lot. He's going to produce a lot of scoring and be in the conversation for rookie of the year. Um, but don't expect anything, you know, dramatic. But don't expect Detroit to all of a sudden be good because the number one overall pick, like, expect them to still be in rebuilding mode. But if you're a Pistons fan, you could be like, okay, at least, you know, a couple years down the line, I like our young core. And if we can keep them, there's, there's potentially something special there. Number two, I'm going with Houston um, Rockets. They're going to select center Evan Mobley from, um, from USC. Um, his game kind of reminds me of DeAndre Ayton, actually. Um, he could hit a jump shot if needed, but he thrives more in the paint, whether it's and whether it's you know doing hook shots, dunking, like scoring around the rim, or on the defense end because he does average a couple blocks a game. So he's going to be a, uh, a problem. And for Houston, they barely have any size because they have Christian Wood who's good, and then Killian Lindy, I feel like is just there, you know, until he gets trade type of thing. So um, Evan Mobley makes the clear sense for Houston here is who they should pick. Um. Third, now this is kind of where you can go either way. There's kind of like a couple things like up in the air, you know, at this point. There's, that's not a says stone. Um, you know, cause some people have Jalen Sucks, from Gonzaga. Some people have Jalen Green, you know, from G League. Um, it can kind of go either way here. I'm going to go um, with Jalen Green here from the G League. I mean, I, he, he had a pretty good um, rookie season in the G League. You know, he averaged 18 points a game, you know, 46%. Overall, which needs to be a little bit higher, but he did shoot um, 36.5% from three, which is pretty good, considering with all the other guards um, in the slaughter and draft in general. Like, there's some that are better, but there's a lot, you know, that are kind of struggling with the perimeter shots. So having Jalen Green is going to make some of them is pretty good um, if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, you have, of course, um, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. So 
Um, you're just going to have him basically coming off the bench and trying, you know, to give you scoring off the bench, potentially be like a six man, if you will, type of thing. Um, so, uh, which can't go wrong. And if Jalen Green ends up being better than Sexton or, or Garland or whatever, then great. But if he's not right on par, a little bit worse, then he could be at least a good bench player for you because um, you need a deep bench. Uh, Toronto, I have them selecting poor guard Jalen Suggs from Gonzaga. So we know Kyle Lowry is going to be gone from Toronto most likely. And with him being gone, I mean, you got Fran Van Fleet, but he's kind of, he's like a small, like a point guard, but he can, and can play point guard, but he's, I put him more as a shooting guard. Um, so therefore, Jalen Suggs can come in to be that point guard to help run. Um, I I feel like he's um, a good defender, like, like Kyle Lowry was on defense. Um, he's a good defender. And I saw him a lot, you know, since I'm a BYU fan. I saw him a lot, you know, um, his one season in college. And something about him is that he's very good at getting his teammates involved. Like, he's willing to make all the passes type of thing. And then, like, let's say he's not sh- let's say he's not taking a lot of shots, you know, but getting his teammates involved. But then if it becomes a clutch game and you need him to start making shots, that's what he would do. Like, there was one game I watched where, you know, he probably had, like, you know, eight points, you know, throughout the whole game, and all of a sudden, the last three minutes, he just all of a sudden made four three-pointers in a row, bam, 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 to kind of close the deal and help Gonzaga win type of thing. So that's the type of player he is. He's a very good clutch player. And Toronto's getting um, a lucky um, guy, Jen Sucks. Also, Jen Sucks, you know, is a Midwest, you know, Minnesota, small-town Minnesota type of guy, and he even plays small-town Spokane. So being out um, stuck in the north, you know, in Canada, I feel like, you know, he's kind of used to that situation, so if it's there stylistically-wise. Uh, fifth is Orlando. Now, they don't need guards here because i would like davion mitchell here uh, for baylor but they don't need guards here they need a forward um and, I, and they do have some standards so kind of like a small four power forward i know they got window card junior but um, they could use another forward so i'm gonna have, gonna have to go with jonathan kuminga from the g league um he, he a lot of people saying he's kind of like andrew wiggins um so not the best three-point shooter only 24.6 percent but if he can't approve on that and that's where then that's where he's going to be good. But but if he can, then he might be like a Matisse Thybulle, you know, from the Philadelphia 76ers, where he's can score on the rim. But other than that, he's really known for his defensive prowess, which if you're Orlando, you, you need some defense on your team. Um, six, I got um, Oklahoma City. They're going to select power forward Jalen Johnson from Duke. Um, Oklahoma City does not need guards. They need forwards big time. So I feel like he Jalen Johnson's type forward where he's, you know, kind of like a Ben Simmons from what, from when I've, you know, read about his bio and everything and what he's kind of like, you know, he's kind of type of forward. He's going to dribble the ball, you know, you know, dish out assists and stuff like that, get rebounds. It's kind of like what Ben Simmons does, but he, he doesn't have a perimeter shot. So that's why he's kind of getting it compared to Ben Simmons right now. But um, I feel like that's a good match for Oklahoma City there. Um, Golden State 7th, I feel like they're going to go with point guard Scotty Barnes um, from, from Florida State. Um, he's a big guard. Um, which is good because they need more like you know wing size players. He's like a six nine type of guard, um, and he can score, but you don't have to rely on him to score. And he can help out on the defense end, which Golden State, um, you need help on the defense end. And Leonard Hamilton does a very good job of coaching defense on Florida State, um, so I feel like Scotty Barnes would be a good fit there. Um, Orlando, I have them picking point guard, um, Alperin Suguin from Turkey. Um, actually, no, I mean, it's a power forward, my bad. Uh, he's six foot nine power forward. Um, from what I hear, he's a man among boy, boys. Um, he's kind of like a dominant fa- power forward, if you will. He's just going to, you know, like post you up and all that, you know. He averaged 82 points a game, 8.9 rebounds in Turkey, so that's pretty good, you know. Um, I, this, he's probably going to be one of the best forwards in the draft, so. I think um, the Magic are getting steal here. So now the Magic have fortified their forward positions along with the current forwards that they have. Um, Nine, Sacramento. I have been going with shooting guard Franz Wagner here, who's um, older brother, you know, plays in the NBA. I think he's with the Celtics now. He was with the Wizards, but I think he's with the Celtics now. Um, A lot of people are thinking that he's going to be just kind of a role player, but like a very good one. You know, that's why he's going to be in the lottery, you know, a very good role player, you know. Um, and what's interesting about him is that with Michigan's one of the best players out for the postseason, he kind of stepped up his game in the postseason, which is what you like to see if you're a scout. Um, so if you're Sacramento here, you're going to lose Buddy Heal. You, st- you have a long, young core line, and you want to continue to surround, you know, De'Aaron Fox stuff with more shooters. So I feel like this is a good step here to get Wagner. 
And then the New Orleans Pelicans 10th. I feel like you got to get a point guard here because Eric Bledsoe is not the answer. It wouldn't surprise me if he gets traded. Lonzo Ball, like there's rumors about him, you know, leaving free agency. Well, he's a stricter free agent right now, but even if he stays one more year, there's rumors he might leave in free agency. And then with the back, other backup point guards on the roster, you're just not 100% sure if they can carry the load or not. Um, so if I'm New Orleans here, but I don't, I don't want to go just any point guard. I want to go with some with experience, you know, um, professional experience. So I had them taking uh, – Josh Giddy. Um, he played in the NBL um, for the 36ers. Um, so you kind of kind of know like how Lamelo Ball, you know, played professional ball for one year, and now he's flourishing. So I feel like a lot of um, scouts are gonna start to go after that model. Where okay, if you're playing professional ball already, I actually prefer that over college ball. So I feel like they're gonna take um, Giddy here. Um, he averaged um, you know 11 points, six points assists per game. Um, so he's really good at distributing the ball. Once again, one of the guards is not the best three-point shooter. Um, you know, with other um, shooters on the roster, though, I, don't, I feel like he, he can take time you know, to develop that. And especially if Lonzo Ball, at least on the roster one year, or Eric Bud, so he can, you know, basically be in the G League, you know, for you to take time to develop a shot and stuff and then come in and be able to contribute. Um, next, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting... I'm the best player available, in my opinion, and point guard Davian Mitchell from Baylor. Now, this, you know, every year there's that one player, you know, that kind of drops a little bit that you're kind of surprised about. So this is the player, Davian Mitchell from Baylor, that's dropped because if you're up to me, he'd be around the four to seven range. But, you know, there's fits and all that um, to deal with. So I feel like Charlie here, and now they have a point guard, um, LaMelo Ball, but I feel like Terry Rozier has kind of hit his ceiling, is kind of inconsistent. Um, so I feel like if you can have um, a better um, point guard or crime mate than Terry Rozier. Um, Devontae Graham's okay as well, but if David Mitchell could turn out the player where I think he t he can be, where right now people are comparing to Donovan Mitchell, which I'm going to say it's too early to say that, but if he can get to that kind of level, you're going to want him over Terry Rozier or Devontae Graham. So I feel like Charlotte will take him. He's the best pair of player. Now, Charlotte desperately needs a big man. And there's a big man they're going to be taking right pretty soon, but uh, they got to go with the best available player at that point because David Mitchell would be a shocker if he follows up the lottery round. Um, and you don't want him slipping them down the Golden State at all. Um, so I feel like he's going to be taken there. San Antonio, they are plenty good at guards. Um, so what? So what they and then they can get a small four type of player, um, like a Corey Kispersen to kind of replace, you know, Demar Rosen, you know. Um, but I feel like they're going to take a four here, and I'm going to have them taking someone locally and. Center Kai Jones from Texas. Um, he kind of reminds me of Jackson Hayes for the New Orleans Pelicans right now. Um, he doesn't have any outside games, whatever. He's just kind of a lob guy. But it's like, you know, he's going to be a hustle guy, a rebounder guy, and a good defender and protect the rim. So that's what San Antonio can use. And that's the type of player um, Gary Popovich likes. Um, 13 Indiana now. Um, you can go a couple different directions here. But I'm going to go with them taking a center. Um, out of Kentucky and Isaiah Jackson, who's going to kind of replace Miles Turner since he's Miles Turner is being talked about um, leaving Indiana. So he's going to kind of replace him as far as, you know, playing good defense, being a lob type of guy, being a you know, physical threat, a lot of Sabonis. And then last but not least for Golden State with the 14th pick, I think they can go a couple directions here. But I think they're going to go Corey Kispert here from Gonzaga, and here's why. The Warriors... You know, you got a shooter and Steph Clay, shooting Clay Thompson. You want more three-point shooters, and that's and Corey Kispert's going to be one of, if not the best three-point shooter in the draft. Um, so he just kind of fits right into that system. It's like he doesn't have to like be bigger. I think he can just come right off the bench, be a spark plug, and just make threes. You know, so I feel like he'll fit right into Steve Kerr's system here. Um, now there's other players you know that could have been considered. You know, like Moses Moody, a shooting guard from Arkansas. He's a good shooter. Um, I would I wouldn't be surprised if he sneaks in the lottery at all. Um, I feel like he should. Um, then there's um, Jared Butler, another guard from Baylor, um, who's good. There's Chris Dorty, another shooting guard from Oregon that's good. Uh, Jared Springer, another guard from Tennessee that's good. Um, there's also um, James Balkanai from UConn. He's a guard. He's good. And Sharif Cooper, another guard from Otter's good. And they all deserve, you know, to be in the lottery. But that... But again, that's there's like I said, it's a very deep draft class. But this is what I got for right now. Um, so thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel to learn about me. Um, in my next podcast, I'll go over you know my takeaways you know from the conference finals for both teams so far. Thank you very much, and y'all have a wonderful day.